Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about the latest studio album from Seraph Ungel, entitled Dark Parade. This is the sixth full-length studio album, and potentially also the final album from this American epic heavy metal crew, one of the oldest metal bands out there, might I add, having formed in late 1971 and having done their very first concert on New Year's Day 1972 at an anti-Vietnam War peace rally. They occupy a territory very similar to that of Merciful Fate, Celtic Frost, Anvil, not so much in sound or style and presentation, more so in how they kind of were a pioneering band. They kind of helped to broaden the horizons of heavy metal and heavy music and rock music in the late 70s, early 80s, into the mid 80s. But despite that, never really saw the same levels of fame and popularity and success that many of their peers and many of the bands that they inspired inspired did. Seer of Ungle and specifically records like Frost and Fire and King of the Dead were very influential to the development of power metal, doom metal, and like epic doom metal. Thanks to the epic soundscapes and arrangements, thanks to that muscular sheen and some of those more mournful tones, the wailing banshee-esque vocals, the fantasy-based lyricism, and those subsequent releases like One Foot in Hell and Paradise Lost are not held in the exact same regard. They're nonetheless like pretty thoroughly acceptable, adventurous slices of epic proto-doom and power metal savagery. Shortly after the release of Paradise Lost, Seraph Ungel would disband, but would reconvene in the late 2010s with a comeback album, Forever Black, in 2020, which was pretty well received for the most part. I felt that it felt somewhat unintentionally derivative because there were bands that were inspired by Seraph Ungle that were kind of taking their ideas and had done way better stuff, but nonetheless, it was a pretty solid record from start to finish. I, I think for the most part, Seraph Ungle fans were pretty happy with that thing. In general, I would say Seraph Ungle is a band that I more so respect than genuinely enjoy, but it is a good, solid, thorough respect. The aforementioned Frost and Fire and uh, King of the Dead, I think, are really solid records. Records. And I had a great time talking with Seraph Ungle drummer Robert Garvin a few years ago here on The Metal Meltdown. It is not my most popular interview, but it is actually one of my favorites. And with the recent news that Seraph Ungle will apparently retire, at least from touring, uh, within the next year, it's looking like this will be Seraph Ungle's final album. And, and there's a part of me that can't help but be curious as to what this unique, pioneering, underground metal band could possibly throw at us on potentially their final album. What, what will their swan song be like? Will it be like the Dillinger Escape Plans Dissociation and, and send us out on a glorious note reminding us of what made them so unique and special? Or will it be like an actual literal swan song from Carcass and just be bad and awful and I hate it? I mean, yeah, I know, Carcass came back with Surgical Steel and Torn Arteries, and I also know some people like Swan Song, but I don't care. That that's it's bad. It's 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 bad, but whatever. We're not here to talk about Carcass. And right off the bat, I will say that this album does not have the impact, the power, and the imagination of earlier records. Unless you are a Seraph Ungle diehard fan, this is not something I can really picture being in regular rotation for you. I will also say that it carries a lot of the same weight of Forever Black. It, much like that album, unintentionally feels somewhat derivative. I understand that Seraph Ungle pioneered a lot of these sounds, but the fact is there are a lot of bands in like the doom metal and trad heavy metal and power metal realms that, are, that have taken these sounds and these spices and influences and have elevated them to new levels. Just this year alone, we've seen, uh, you know, amazing records from Smolder and Megaton Sword, and you can see tons of Seraph Ungle influence in everything they do, but on its own ground, in its own right, in its own regard, it is still a pretty well-constructed piece of, like, retro underground metal that longtime fans, I think, will appreciate and does make for perhaps a stronger send-off than this band maybe, like, has the genuine right to. Like, for a band that realistically shouldn't even really be around anymore, they're sounding pretty fucking good, and they're doing a pretty decent fucking job. 
You've got Velocity, for instance, which sounds relatively adventurous. It's got a decent momentum and charge and enthusiasm to it. It's very chunky, mid-paced, epic heavy metal with traditional old-school, like, 1970s, 80s metal pyrotechnics, walls of wailing choruses and harmonies. The song also closes out on, like, a big, stereotypical rock climax that, in a way, feels kind of cartoonish, but there's something also kind of endearing about it because it's just so honest and genuinely pretty well executed. Then you have the following number, Relentless, a much slower cut, Seraph Ungle showing their more epic doom metal kind of side here, with a lot of plotting rhythms and soaring guitar pyrotechnics and anguished, agonizing, pain-filled vocal onslaughts. I kind of like the title track, Dark Parade 2, especially in the latter half, as it embraces these, like, classic heavy metal riffs and licks and grooves that bring to mind, like, classic works from Black Sabbath, like Masters of Reality and Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Like, it has a certain swing and darkness to it that I'm sure would put an evil grin on Tony Iommi's face. Then there's Sacrifice, which pairs some more adventurous, slow-paced doom and heavy metal with a little bit of flamenco guitar and perhaps some of the most over-the-top vocal work on the album from Tim Baker, who, generally speaking, has had one of the most definitively love-it-or-hate-it kind of vocal styles in the game. And that definitely has not changed here on Dark Parade. There's a lot of literal wailing and screaming all across this thing. One thing I will point out as well, uh, I'm not sure if it's a byproduct of this vocal style or maybe just Tim growing older and it being a consequence of Tim growing older, but there were some weird pitchy moments across the record where there were some weird notes or some flat notes or just some altogether fucking wrong and painful notes. With Sacrifice specifically, he's jumping around quite a lot, and you also have these backing vocals and these gang vocals that kind of like add to the vocal chaos. Unfortunately though, Distant Shadows loses my attention very quickly because not only does it have the most boring and basic riffage on this album, it also has some of the most boring and basic riffage I've heard on any rock or metal album in 2023. Doesn't help either that this song is unnecessarily long, and on that note, I, I just gotta say Sailor at the Seas of Fate, though it does have a lot of like interesting, evil, epic movements and progressions, does not need to be over eight minutes long. In general, I feel like you could probably cut at least a minute off of a lot of these songs, and, and suddenly you'd have something a little bit leaner and tighter and more impactful. And in general, yeah, I, I would have preferred for a little bit more variety. Like, a lot of these songs follow very similar blueprints. It's very much in line with a lot of what Seraph Ungle has done. And again, it just doesn't have the imagination or power or impact of previous records. It especially falls short of what it especially falls short of a lot of other stuff we've kind of heard from like epic doom metal and trad heavy metal in the past couple of years from bands who are very much inspired by Sirif Ungle. Like for me, the logic is kind of like, why would I listen to this again when I can just go listen to the old Sirif Ungle, which is better, or I can go listen to something new from like Smolder that's just way better and has a lot more kind of going on. Hey, I had to re-record the ending for this because I'm a I'm a dumb dumb. That's the simple way of putting it. Uh, 2.5 out of 5. It's okay. Leaning maybe towards a 3. You know, a good, solid, noble effort for potentially a final album. I think this delivers what Seraph Ungle fans want, warts and all. There's definitely enough here that I think I could enjoy again if I were to re-listen to it. 2.5 out of 5. It's okay. A good, noble, uh, occasionally entertaining effort. Bands have definitely ended their career on much worse notes than this. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fuck immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.